Coming up this week, off screen. We join the ladies of Book Club. There's a look back of that summer. We meet my friend Dharma. And Francois Ozon brings the Saxon danger to Lamont Dubler. All this coming more, off screen. This is. This is off screen. Off screen. Latest film news and reviews. This is Off Screen, the on screen radio show. Ooh, welcome to Off Screen. I'm Dan Connor. I am Case Allen. So, welcome back, Mr. Allen. Um, Thank you. It's, Thank uh, you. It's, it's been another week of films, uh, another week of weather, another yeah, week of bank holidays. The weather's been really bad today. It was really great over the weekend. So, I know. I had, a, um, I had a really great time in the sun. I burnt. Yeah, and, and I'm Arab. Do you know how hard say, that like, is? Despite hard your, me. your 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 uh, your background, yeah. <laughs> it's it's hard for me. I go a sort of uh, I go a sort of a mocha shade. In, in, in I go the, a bit of sun, like uh, yellow and pink. I look a bit like a Battenberg <laughs> after I've been out in the sun for a bit. I have seen you in shorts, so I can attest. <laughs> um, <laughs> that will never happen again. So uh, before we get then to all those films, all those uh, all those reviews, news bits, top ten, all the usual fun, uh, we need some news to start us off for the week. Then, and uh, what's what's the big Happening this I think week. the big news is about uh, Han uh, Soso. Han Soso. Apparently, he is Han Soso. Yeah. The, I'm, I'm, I'm going to coin that now. So, <laughs> anyone else, you owe me, you owe me money. Speaking of money, yeah, Solo didn't make a lot of it. It didn't, did it? Yeah. What's the What's the figure on this? Do we actually know? Because I think I heard it come through as there's there's a couple of different ones depending yeah. on what you're looking at. So, if we're talking about the U.S. domestic, okay, it was projected mm-hmm. for a I think for a three day weekend. Yeah. Bear in mind, it was a memorial four day weekend, but for three days, it was looking at between one thirty and one fifty million dollars. Respectable for a Star Wars movie on Memorial Day week. Definitely, yeah. yeah. So, so it wasn't it wasn't looking at any of like the like. Uh, any of the canon episodes or anything like that. No. Um, but they were looking like a Rogue One kind of thing, and Rogue One definitely had formed. Um, this, over the four days, got um, $101 million. Wow. Okay, Which is, that's... it's max. It's, it's still a lot of money. It's a, it's a lot of money, isn't it? But, but... For, for a film that is definitely cost $3 million to make. It's like being annoyed that LeBron can't hit a basket from 80 yards. Yeah, like, you can. Okay, we appreciate you're still the best basketball player in, in the world, mm. but uh, you can't meet our over realistic, <laughs> our unrealistic over yeah. expectations. Like, <laughs> even if it matched them, that would be fine. But um, yeah, and, and I think what's possibly even more worrying is worldwide over those four days. Yeah, that was a hundred and. 145 or 150 million? I think that was the figure I saw which as well, is which is strange. Not good. Well, I know how much it made in the UK uh, in, in our box office top Are, 10, are we going to top up now? We're going we're gonna to save it. No, we're going to save that figure, Ooh. but I know how much it made, and it's it's not it's not even half of what Deadpool made in its first weekend. No, and uh, Deadpool in its second weekend has made half of what Solo has made in its first weekend. Yeah, so, uh, pretty much. There is a math challenge for you, people. Go yep. work that out. There you go. Go and do, go and do that algebra. But in the meanwhile, uh, we should probably... Let's plug the podcast real quick. Yes. So you can go on to uh, a- Acast, iTunes. I almost said iTunes. Then. iTunes. Acast, iTunes. Why does that exist? Deez, uh, um Stitcher. We're on Stitcher. We always forget Stitcher. That's popular yeah. now. Get some Stitcher life. Yeah. yeah. So get some Stitcher in your life. Yeah. Um, and uh, pick your podcast platform of choice. Why are we even on tune yeah. You know, come Tune on. in, yeah. Have, have you already said Deezer? Or is Deezer part of something else? No? I think Deezer and Stitcher are the same. I don't know. They, what, are, they, are they like being absorbed like, like the Borg? I, I can't keep track of anything anymore. I, I really can't. I'll tell you what, I, let, let me talk about something I can keep track of, though. Uh, let me talk about my friend Dharma. Oh, yeah. How is he? How is he? Um, well, after summer <laughs> vacation and, and after we returned from summer camp, we just uh, we just stopped writing. <laughs> we lost touch. Yeah, it's probably for the best. Probably for the best, if, considering. Uh, if I'm honest. Right, okay. So my friend Darba is literal. And this is the story as IMDb describes it. And it's actually the perfect description of this movie. The, the description goes as follows. A young Jeffrey Dahmer struggles to belong in high school. That is literally the plot of this movie. Um, he meets three friends who are sort of, uh, you know, boisterous pranksters, things like that, who um, discover something of a kindred spirit in Jeffrey Dahmer, that he likes to, uh, you know, cause a scene. He likes to distract. He likes to break the status quo, you know, kick over the hornet's nest, as it were. And they decide to form, as it were, a, a club, a sort of squad. They will combine forces, and they will prank the hell out of their school for their final year. And this is as close 
close as Dharma has ever come in his life to belonging somewhere, to having friends. Um, we have a clip. Is and, it, it sounds all very like John Hughes. It does Breakfast a bit. Club. It does a bit. Uh, do, do, do like the Simple Minds do the soundtrack for it? I will tell you that the main, because Dharma is a very silent character, the main voice you are about to hear is Nat Wolf from uh, Paper Towns. Paper Towns? Mm. Am I thinking uh, of yeah. And oh. other films like that. He's, and, he's, in, he's in the other one, isn't he? He's in the other one. Uh, the, the, Fault in Our Stars. Fault in Our Stars. Yeah. The John Green ones. Okay, so here is Nat Wolf establishing the Jeffrey Dahmer fan club. Uh, I think that we should form a Dahmer fan club. What? Yeah, like, I mean, there's just... There's only so much time left. I think with you as our fearless leader, we can we can really disrupt this goal. Go out in style. Yeah, and infamy. Yeah, and if we don't, I'm gonna have to do something crazy. Like kill the Pope. <laughs> <laughs> Dom, look, I already drew you, actually. This one's called Dahmer and a Bag of Groceries. <laughs> what do you think? And as part of the Dahmer fan club, I point myself the minister of propaganda. <laughs> so Nat Wolf there in what would clearly have been the David Crumholtz role if you made this movie 15 years ago. Yeah. So don't, don't you miss David Crumholtz? I do. Every day. <laughs> Yeah, I, I miss him as a as a wisecracking elf. That's what I, I miss him. I miss him as a wisecracking skinny man in his twenties, and then he sort of he grew up, became middle aged, put a lot of weight, and became was in like, was in numbers, was, was in numbers yeah. in between. But now he's become part of the Woody Allen uh, sort of collective. Yeah, it's whenever yeah. you need like a yeah, it, it always turns up as the when you the token when you when you, when you can't afford like either Seth Rogen or Jake Johnson. <laughs> yes, you get yeah, you get from Holtz. Uh, right, so this is written and directed uh, by um, is it Mark Mayer. I think it's Mark Mayers. Mark Mayers, sorry. Who I did have to check wasn't related to Nancy Myers. Right. Okay. Did have to yeah. check. Is not. Uh, not overly familiar with his, uh, his his catalog. He's done a couple of indie films over the years. But the way this uh, the way this place is as an adaptation of John Batdorf's uh, graphic novel. Now John Batdorf is a character in the story who's played by Nat Wolf. Mm. And what he's done is in the decades on after after everything with Jeffrey Dahmer. Because oh spoiler alert! If you don't know this, because we've not mentioned it, Jeffrey Dahmer became a serial killer. If you're wondering who the hell we're talking about, yes, yes he yes he did. He 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 may have chopped up one or two people he did, he, he is did it the 13 murders. is it 13 is that's, that, a, that's 13 a jump 19 what, one or two 13 he, they do they do remind you at the end of the film that between something like 1973 and 1991 yeah anyway um, he, he was productive he was he was productive so this is an adaptation of an autobiographical graphic novel that John Batdorf wrote of his own story Huh. Okay. And it's played actually rather well. The story is never quite as engaging as you want it to be, but the actual performance is at the centre of it. Basically, um, I'm going to have to look up his name, Ross Lynch, who plays Dharma. He plays Dharma. Right? And Nat Wolf. As, Nat Wolf uh, is really good. Nat Wolf is really good, and he yeah. works in this. He what's, really does. What's his brother called? His brother's an actor as well, isn't he? There's another wolf. There's right? another wolf. It's not Scott Wolf. And it's not Tom Wolf, because he, he, he died. Is it, it's not, not Thomas Wolf. And not... Not Winston Wolf. Not Winston Wolf either. Okay. No. We'll, we'll, we'll look it up. Is it Lone Wolf? Is oh, that'd be good. Lone Wolf? Yeah. <laughs> or like, one's called Wolf and one's called Ant Cub. <laughs> would work. Anyway, um, the only problem I have with my friend Dom is I think it's shot to... I think it's staged and presented too uh, confidently as a being a unique, wholeheartedly original tale all unto itself. I think if they'd gone as broad as the material tempts, tempts them to... Mm. It would have been a bit more interesting if, if they'd added, and I hate to say this because I don't want to belittle the performance. I think the performance of Dharma is absolutely terrific. Mm. I feel like if they'd lent harder on the sort of weird black comedy of it all, and I know that's a black comedy you only get to have 30 years later. It's obviously not if you've lived through it, but the film threatens black comedy all the time. And the performance by Ross Lynch leans towards it. And then you've got Nat Wolf, who just has that cheekiness to him. Mm. And you think, this is a film that really wants to push for, let's make a, a, a darker statement about it. And in reality, what you get is is a lost lost high school boy story. Mm. And you think, ah. But we've not seen it about Dharma. 
Yeah, so I guess that is that's something that's it. new. I yeah. think it's because nothing's really been done in the main in mainstream film with Dharma yet. Mm. I mean, except for that, you know, that one line in Demolition Man that we seem to have to keep cutting out of new reissues. <laughs> yeah. yeah, cut that out, cut out Taco Bell. <laughs> yeah, yes, cut that out with yeah. a horrible Pizza Hut line. Taco Bell is a thing in this country right now, so it, it is. So can we please yeah. have Demolition Man put back to how it was now? Yeah. Now Hash- that we hashtag, have- hashtag bring back my bell. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hashtag the embargo on the bell ends yeah so there we are anyway um this so i liked it but i didn't love it and the thing is i was fascinated by the subject and i really wanted to love it and i think it's well put together i just don't think it does as much with the material as it wants to i mean it comes from a graphic novel which tells you an awful lot about the sensibilities that are that are behind it it was made quite a while ago and it wasn't it yeah kicking around a long time Uh, but it was kind of a festival, darling. And based on Ross Lynch's performance and Mark Mayer's as, as work behind the camera, you can see why. Uh, shout out for Vincent Carthizer, by the way, who turns up in here. Um, Mr. Pete, uh, Pete Gimble. Yeah, Pete Gimble. Oh, yeah. Pete, 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 you said Pete Gimble. I, I did say Gimble, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm clearly Gimble. not well today. Are you seeing another Pete? Is that what this uh, yes, is? Is yes. this you outing yourselves as seeing another Pete? I was, I was going lean on Pete, and now I'm, go- I'm, I'm fully going, I'm going full Pete. <laughs> That is a joke for four people. <laughs> for about four people, yeah. indeed. Uh, my friend Dharma, we're checking out if you're uh, interested in the subject, uh, if you ever wanted to see anything done with Dharma, but be aware this is not going to be that definitive movie that you've always wanted to see. With the latest film news and reviews, this is Off Screen. And we're back, Mr. Allen. So what was it you were saying Hiya. we should have called uh, my friend my friend Dharma? Uh, a, a Dharma drama. A Dharma drama. I love it. Yeah. I absolutely love that. Although it reminds me of Adami Beans. A little bit. <laughs> but, um, I guess you could have a sequel when... Um, like it's, it's a story that people don't really know about Jeffrey Dharma when uh, he went to go work on a farm. Farm for llamas. He was oh. Jeff, Jeffrey Dharma, the llama farmer. Oh my God. That's amazing. Yeah. How is that not a children's I'm gonna, nursery? I'm going to think of more. That's, that's... Why is it not children's nursery rhyme? Because murder. That's because why. murder. People are very touchy about reading murder to children. Okay, so... <laughs> <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> Let's talk about a film. Um, this is going to take you back into film history now. Okay, so uh, I feel like we should get like a harp playing because we're looking back in time. Or yeah, I feel yeah. like we should. Let's do that. I might get it and do it in the edit. Yeah. Um, okay, so let's talk about. Do you remember um, a documentary from the uh, from the from the nineteen seventies about the uh, the two kooky ladies who lived in the house in the Hamptons? It was called Grey Gardens. I have to keep looking it up because I forget. It was a 1975 documentary called Grey Gardens. I don't think so. If you remember the very first episode of Documentary Now with Bill Hader mm. and Fred Armisen. I remember that that very parodied well. it. That parodied it. And it was a very, very good parody. It was almost exactly like the actual documentary, <laughs> which was kind of the fun of Documentary Now. If you've never seen Documentary Now, do watch it. It's oh, get on series. it. It's brilliant. Um, right, so the general stories, you've got uh, Edith uh, Beale and, and, and her daughter... Sorry, no, they're not niece and daughter. You're Edith Beale and her daughter, Edith Beale. So they are Big right. Edie, Big Edie and Little Edie. That, that could be confusing. Yeah, well, that's it. That's why they have Big and Little. <laughs> right. You got the documentary in 1975, and then the, doc- the documentary got reissued on, I think it was DVD or Blu-ray, about 10 years ago, and the filmmakers had included an extra documentary. As one does, because there was so much footage taken. Mm. So they've included an extra documentary. What we've now got is a follow-up sequel to that additional documentary that was on the DVD of the first documentary. A documentary that I want to point out is solely centred on these two uh, eccentric, dysfunctional women who share an old-style colonial house in the Hamptons and have simply let it fall into such a state of decay that their local community want them evicted. And the whole point was that because they were loosely related, I think they were like second cousin or something to Jacqueline Mouvier, who of course would then become, and then become... Marge's mum. Who would become Marge's mum, yeah. Um, yeah. Mrs. Mouvier! So it became a cause at the time people showed up to help uh, restore the house they got the money they crowdfunded effectively at the time and, is, and is, is this for we all just show it off crowdfunding it kind of is in a strange way is this way, how yeah. we kickstart kickstart well this is how you kickstart crowdfunding if you're if you're you know JFK's ex kind of thing right. that, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. it she's not been the story that much though and this is say this is the story of the story of the story and how they filmed the first story um, here's a clip East Hampton has become Cash Hamptons and It's very sad. (laughs) It's very sad. It basically started out from a newspaper clipping of the Beals 
strange life in the Hamptons and how they've been there for years, having trouble from the town of East Hampton. It was my idea to go back to East Hampton, which I had so much nostalgia about as a child, and have my extremely eccentric aunt be the narrator for my memories. Smooth operator, smooth operator. Um, back, back, backing music is, as, as you say, Shadow. It's got to be. It's got to be Shadow. It's got to be. Yeah. be. But, okay, so the backing music's better than the film. Yeah. Uh, Shadow's been around for a long time. She, well, she's yeah. a professional. She knows She knows her way around a backing school. Yeah. Her, her love is king. <laughs> right, so um, I'll be honest, I thought this was rubbish. Uh, but that's only because the whole Grey Gardens thing has never particularly appealed to me. Mm. Um... I yeah, I appreciate its contribution to the documentary genre, you know, way back when, great, you know, fantastic. Uh let's stop banging on about it now. And really we're letting these guys have a third round at this. Yeah. Y- you know what I mean? This is We're done. This is you know when you know when people like to bleed a story to death, and I for some reason I always think of Paul Burrell when I think of that. Uh you, you know Paul Burrell who was Princess dies. You just apparently was, was, he, was he the was he the brother or was he like the footman? The, the butler. The, the footman. Was he the footman? The f- you, whatever. You know the guy who yeah. you know had yeah, like yeah, two yeah. years of Princess he, Diana. He had, he had and, proper fame, didn't he, for yeah. a while? Yeah. We well, had like two years of Diana in his life, and then apparently twenty five years worth of stories to tell. This is starting to feel a bit like that yeah. now. You had a documentary. Hmm. You snuck a sequel documentary into the DVD issue of that documentary. Now, don't make another documentary about making the documentary. There's a sequel. I've got, the enough, I've got enough films to watch. Yeah, exactly. I don't need this in yeah. my life. I'll be I'm, honest. I'm trying to think of more songs by Sade. I also think the film itself has always verged on a sort of carnival show level exploitat- level of exploitationism. Um, exploitativism. What's the word? I'm... No, I think, I, think, I think you got it. I think you got um, it in a second go. I've always felt uncomfortable with it about that. I thought once we got to the documentary now parody, I thought, <coughs> okay, that's it now. That's, there's nothing yeah. to be gleaned from this story now. Mm. And you've taken it to the logical extreme of not not parodying it, but actually you know, sat- make, kind of going with a satirical bent on it. Fine, okay, that's everything we ever need of this story now. Having said that, if you were, you know, for some reason, a big fan of the original one, and then you caught the sequel documentary, then why not? give it a try yeah. but I think there's no hope for you if you're already at that point so that's kind of it for me I'm done this yeah. was uh, 80 minutes of my life that I probably would have enjoyed infinitely more in a sketches store if I'm honest but uh, you love sketches bro that's true I yeah, you, you've watched a sketch documentary any day of the week I would you know there's a Funko Pop documentary on Netflix now Yes, I need to watch it. I, I need to. I'm yeah. going to double bill that, mm. and uh, there's a new season of uh, The Toys That Made Us. Oh, is that second season? Yeah, and there, season. there is a Lego episode. You went very Goldblum then. In that second season? <laughs> did I? Did I go a bit Goldblum? There was a second season. <laughs> no, your <laughs> hand came up. There's an episode in here. There's an episode in here. What's it about? Is it? I think it might be Star Trek. There's one that I really wanted to see. and it's Yeah, in... I, th- I, think there's, I think it's Lego, Star Trek, Star Trans- Trek. Transformers. Is Transformers? Oh, it might be Transformers. Yeah, yeah. because I, I'm a sucker for Transformers documentaries. So. And it was definitely Lego. And of course, you've got to have Lego. Yeah. But why? Because there's, there's enough Lego documentaries in the world. There is not. You'll speak to a man who was literally sat like two meters across from loads of Marvel Lego. And I brought you that Solo Lego back from the Solo yes, uh, screening did. last yes, week, did. which is a tie fire, wasn't it? Speaking of Solo, I feel like it's going to be in the top five, maybe. I mean, it's it's made some money, so let's let's find out. I felt no burn because that segue was so smooth. Number five. <laughs> Who let the show dogs out? <laughs> right, yeah, we need to talk about this. <laughs> we need to talk about Job. <laughs> we need to, did we talk about the controversy last week? I feel like no, we, did. we didn't. Did we not? I think it just happened after the show. It happened, right? Okay, I was conscious of the joke in the film, and then yeah. I'll be honest. By the time I got through the film, I'd, I'd yeah. kind of been battered down by it. And I just didn't really think about it, but I do remember noticing it in the film. So the gag is that element of a dog show in which the dog's genitals are cupped, as it were, mm. by the uh, the judge, and the idea that the central dog uh, hero Max, voiced by Ludacris, let us forget. We are not talking about whoa, whoa, whoa. full name, Ludacris Bridges. Yeah, Chris Ludacris. Bridges. Let, let, can we just consider for a second? I just want to remind everyone: we are talking about a talking dog movie starring, you know, ludicrous Chris Bridges. Yep. We are talking about that. 
okay? We are not talking about, you know, uh, 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 Dallas Buyers Club. We're not talking about a film with, with genuine <laughs> awards pedigree or anything like that. Oh, we we got to have that, that mashup. Why was that the first <laughs> genuine awards film you went, you went to? Because you mentioned Jean-Marc Vallée last week. Oh, That's right. <laughs> I just enjoy saying his name. Also... I, I wanted to make more things just so I can say Jean-Marc Vallée. Yeah, also, I just get annoyed having to use uh, 12 Years a Slave as my go-to uh, Oscar film. And people are getting annoyed at me constantly ragging on Call Me By Your Name. So, yeah. yeah. But, you know. Call Me By Your... Hand. Call Me By Your Name, which I maintain, if you're going to call the movie American Pie, you could call Call Me By Your Name Italian Peach. Italian Peach, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, okay, so, the, the whole scene is... Max can't get used to it. He reacts every time the, the, the judge cups his genitals because he's a dog, let us forget. You know, let us not forget. Yeah. Um, and he's told, you just got to go to your Zen place, get to your happy place in your mind, and get through this. Right. And obviously, this has been interpreted since as, as this is, you know, effectively this it's is, a children's movie. This is dog rape. Yeah. This is, that's kind of what they're going for. Now, yeah. to be fair, they are absolutely correct. Yeah. That is the case. Um, it is the case. I did notice it in the first, the first time I saw the film. The problem is the joke comes up about three times, and I was too busy being annoyed about the ending of uh, Nomeo and Juliet, too. You just said first time I've seen the film. How many times have you seen Show Dogs? No, no, no. It came, the, the joke came up multiple times in the film. I mean. Oh, sorry. I I've only seen the film right once. Up. About a month before Shit. it came out, and I was embargoed to hell on it. I think we now know why. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The scene in question has been removed from American audiences. It is still in the British version, as far as I know, according to the BBFC. Because our country's just fine with jokes about that kind of thing. Yeah, we're, we're, yeah. we're good about that. Why not? I mean, oh. don't, don't be mad with someone from Rotherham, we're laughing. Anyway. <sighs> I know. You can't joke about that. We'll, go, we'll get pulled. You're technically from Rotherham, aren't you? I'm from Gulfhope, which is in between Barnsley, Doncaster, and Rotherham. They're all bad, but we all cancel each other out. <laughs> That's fair enough. <laughs> and if anyone asks, I'm from Sheffield. <laughs> okay, so um, the film's rubbish, but you know what? It's a talking dog movie. You know what you're getting with it anyway. Um, apparently, that now includes child pedophilia references. I just, which... I just, want, I just want a dog film where just, there's no controversy. Yeah, wouldn't that be nice? Because didn't a dog's purpose yeah. try, try and murder all the dogs? Yeah. Drown them, as yeah. it were. Right, okay. So uh, let's just write this one off and say let's not endorse show dogs. Um, has anyone tweeted on the matter? Um, yes, somebody has. So I, I, was, I was thinking of like another better dog film. Do you know what I think we should do? I think we should have a Turner and Hooch sequel. Yeah. But it's actually called Turner and Tooch. And we get the dog oh. that Toochie plays... That's in, amazing. Yeah. That would be I'm coming up with all the ideas today. Uh, someone asked tweeted, their name is at Sfields619. They say, the children's movie Show Dogs, not to be confused with like, you know, the, the OAP's film Show Dogs or anything, yeah. um, is dangerous for children. It justifies allowing someone to touch your private parts against your will. It makes a joke out of grooming and molestation. Um, at Shaq... I forgot Shaq is in this. Oh, at yes. Shaq and uh, uh, Ludacris Bridges, I know you guys are better than this. Hashtag... Boycott show dogs. Really? Really? Wow. Ludicrous is better than that? Okay, I think someone's more barometer was okay, and then went a little bit off the rails there. Number four. Sherlock Gnomes. Sherlock Gnomes, which was the movie I was busy being annoyed at when we were talking about show dogs, so obviously I didn't really think about the uh, child grooming thing. Yeah. It's amazing how yeah, you can fail to notice some things, huh? Um, or fail to clock some things. So Chiwetel Ejiofor uh, Edge was in this. He is, and yeah. he's awesome in it. And I even didn't mind uh, Johnny Depp as uh, Sherlock Gnomes. The problem is I like the Sherlock Gnomes movie so much more than I liked the Gnomeo and Juliet sequel. Yeah. And so there's, there's like a 30-minute cut of this where it's, <laughs> yeah. it's pretty decent. There's, there's about 30, 40 minutes if you lock out <laughs> all the Gnomeo and Juliet Solid. Stuff. But then who are they rescuing? I don't yeah. know. I, um, I want to think of more gnome puns for future films. And we could have a TV show mm. called Gnome uh, uh, and Away. Would I, allow, would I allow my infant daughter to watch this film and take away any more meaning for it? Hmm, Gnome Way. Yeah. That's about the best I'm coming up with. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, I, I think the film's complete conclusion is utterly reprehensible. And I'm aware that this means that we have just <laughs> kind of got all... We've got a, we've got a bit... What's the name? Uh, Mary Whitehouse on two different films. A little bit, yeah. We've got a bit Mary Whitehouse on two different films. Well, Has, some, has anyone tweeted? Yeah, uh, Did, some, some, some guy. They think it was um, fun. Some guy enjoyed it. Okay, some guy. Some guy. Stephen says, uh, enjoyed it at Sherlock Gnomes with the family. Good story. And seeing London look lovely. Hashtag Sherlock Gnomes. Does Stephen know that London is not animated? I don't think he does. Hmm. But uh, you know what? I, I, I spent a nice bank holiday in London. It, it did look lovely. Number three. Go 
Guardians of Fantastic Infinity Gauntlet Volume 2. I love it. <laughs> 1.9 billion now. <laughs> really? 1.9. Wow, and it's it's still at number three. So how many um, weeks has it been to be five weeks now? I think so. So I think mm, it's I think it's got like I think it's got the legs to do two billion. Yeah, oh, most definitely. If point. if this thing can churn out one point nine, it's not that. You look at the. It's a film that's built for repeat business because of yeah. the structure of it. I need to go see it for a third time. I think. I'm going to go and see it for a fifth. So You've already seen it four times. I have, I have seen it four. Wow, times. you are keeping that film in the top five. I am single handedly. I'm, I'm happy to do it. In fact, um, I. Do you? I don't. Do you follow me on Twitter? I don't know. Uh, are, we, are we Twitter friends? Yeah, I, I do follow, and you follow me. But this is this is a very strange thing to explain. And um, I can't access my Twitter because mm. I have forgotten what email I've used for it. <laughs> I've tried five different email addresses. I've lost the password for all of them. And I mean, I, I had upwards of a hundred and ten friends. You are worse. Or You're or the only person I know of them that's worse than Alan Frank. Yeah, <laughs> but, yeah. <laughs> it's just me. Can't remember an email address or password. So However, well. Instagram booming, my friend. Oh well, okay. Yeah. As long as you've got that Instagram. Grant. Anyway, so the whole thing was I had a night off and I, I put on Twitter was like night night to myself. Infinity War question mark. Infinity yeah. War picture of cap with the shield. Nice. And and you know what? It was a night well spent. I just did this last week because I just had a night to myself. I yeah. thought, why not? It was great. I had good fun. Do you know what? I got a couple of days to myself this week. I might go, I might go do that tomorrow. Got to do it. I'll come with you. Yeah, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, I'm a big fan. It seems the audience are big fans. Um, has, has anyone tweeted to support their fandom or has someone uh, written in to bemoan it? Yes, indeed. So, um, at Snick One and the Whip, whatever that is, that's cool. David. <laughs> this is other name, I guess. Okay. It's a more, it's a more common name. Uh, just watched uh, Thor Ragnarok. Thor certainly had a very bad week. <laughs> he also included the events of Infinity War. True. True that. It's true, but it's like they called the... the uh, did, isn't Iron Man to Thor and uh, the Incredible Hulk referred to collectively as, as it Fury's Big Week? Yeah. Oh, no, it's not. It's not Hulk. It's, it's Thor... Uh, it's the first thought. It's Iron Man 2, and Cap? it's the end of Cap. Yeah. yeah, that's all meant to be the same week, and it's referred to as Fury's, Fury's Big, Big Week. week. Like, a, like a baby's day out kind of thing. Exactly. That's adorable. Number two. Deadpool. Nah, just Deadpool. Deadpool 2. <laughs> Do you know what? I get the sense you're a bit sick of Deadpool in your life. <laughs> Yeah. It's funny enough, there are a lot of people, and a lot of film critics have been. A lot of film critics, like, prior to us all seeing the film, I think mm. a lot of them had that burnout. But uh, I, I seem to enjoy it less and less the more I think about it week by week. Mm. But I remember really enjoying it. I remember really enjoying the first one, really enjoying the second one. I've only seen the first one once, because I tried to watch it on Netflix a couple months ago, and I was just, I got 20 minutes in, I was like, I'm kind of done with this. I think the character so, has that, that same sensation as Batman, in that you, you can really overexpose that character. Yeah. Like, he, that character needs to be, as soon as this film is sort of wrapped and done at the box office, he needs to go away. Yeah. And put him back in the box, like the, and don't bring him out to Lex Force. Yeah, the marketing of the first one was incredible, was on point, but then it just, it went into overdrive. Mm, and I did think, the same thing for this one, and I just... Victim of his own success, we could say. Maybe, yeah. I don't think the film's a patch on the second, on the first one. Um, I do think it is to the original what John Wick 2 was to that series, and then weirdly comes from the same director as well. Um, I did have fun with it, and I did laugh, and I did I did think it was you know, an amusingly fun movie. Uh, I think it's over-egged at times. I think there's mm. too much plot for a film that really doesn't need any. There's an emotional arc that nobody has ever asked for. Um, and, yeah, I mean, it does feel a bit phoned in compared to the first movie. The first movie felt aggressive and raw, and this feels like that aggression has just been fired down mm. just enough for Fox to make a you know a corporately sanctioned bit of satire. Yeah. It does feel a little bit sanitized at the start like of the that. first movie, where even the filthier jokes do feel like they've gone through committee. You know yes. what I mean? What's the most offensive word we can come up with for? Uh, uh, go and ask Stephen over there in the third cubicle. He, he's, <laughs> handl- he's handling offensive terms this week, and it feels like that kind of a movie. Yeah, but but I did like it, and you know. yeah, it's it's a difficult one to explain how I feel about it. To be honest, maybe I, sh- I should just just go watch it again and just decide once and for all. There's some great cameos. There are. Uh, are there any great tweets? Don't know about great because I've not read it yet. So <laughs> okay. we'll, find, we'll find out together as a as a team. I love the suspense. Uh, Taylor Wade says hashtag Deadpool with a Deadpool uh, uh, emoji uh, was better than I ever could have dreamed well obviously all the dreams have just been about I don't know playing golf or looking at a wall or 
just not great dreams. Yes. Number one. Solo. Um, yeah, every time I hear that, I think of... Joy. <laughs> well, obviously. <laughs> Joy and a lot of coke. Co- yeah, co- closest possible thing. Um, <clears throat> have you seen that clip of Bill Murray when he's on SNL in the 70s? And yes. he, he plays a lounge singer and he sings his version of a Star Wars. Yeah, yeah I love that Those one. crazy Star Wars. I think about every <laughs> single time. Oh, God. We should yeah. find that clip for next week. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> well, that's a good button. Yeah. Um, so Solo, I mean, I liked it. I didn't think it was groundbreaking. Same. Uh, I thought it was a very entertaining popcorn flick. It was a very Ron Howard film. I like Ron Howard. Hmm. I understand a bit of a Ron Howard backlash sometimes because he's he's the definition of safe pair of hands, isn't he? He's a bit vanilla, isn't he? Yeah, yeah. But, but sometimes you like a bit of vanilla. Sometimes the vanilla is called for. Yeah. A bit yeah. of you know, ginger frosting on top you, of it. Yeah, yeah. We, we don't need Rocky Road every time. Sometimes vanilla will do. No, you know, and apparently, apparently the other version we're going to get had like lasers and sparklers and all sorts of <laughs> nonsense coming out of it. I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I still mourn, you know, the Lord and Miller version we could have I had. I think we all do, but we'll, but we'll we'll see what they do they do next. We were all mourning the, the Edgar Wright version of Ant-Man and yeah, the Baby yeah. Driver happened, so... Exactly. Um, yeah. Lando's great in it. Yeah. I can't wait for the Lando film if that happens. Yeah. I don't think we're going to get a solo two. I don't think we're going to get a solo two. Um, I am intrigued to see a Kenobi movie. And I am intrigued to see a Lando movie, but can we? Can that be it now for prequel yeah, and characters? I, I'm not I, interested. I do not want for Boba Fett. No, I, I I don't want a Boba Fett movie. I'm not interested in these characters. I want to see the future of this universe. I want to see stuff I haven't seen before. Oh, oh but people have got issue with that as well. So, uh, um, well, yeah, because you can't have Last Jedi now. So you know, <sighs> ten films in, we just they they just can't win. They they really can't. And it's not our fault, but. Our fault. <laughs> it's as, ours, as a culture, it is all our fault. We have raised the bar too much. Yeah. And uh, is it, someone tweeted uh, on this film at all because it, it's hard to tell what back whether you're going to get the positive battle or the negative one on this one. No, absolutely. Um, well, this person seems to be uh, quite a favourite. Um, so, uh, a Star Wars story was absolutely fantastic. Gave me all the feels that I got in Force Awakens. Chewbacca is my homeboy. Fair. Yeah. The latest film news and reviews. This is off screen. And we're back. So, Mr. Allen, before we get to reviewing the big new release this week, uh, you know, the <coughs> side of buses mega hits that we're all anticipating as we do every week, uh, have you got a piece of film news to uh, to take us there? Uh, I have. And uh, just before I do, spoiler about that film, mm-hmm. I thought it was a goddamn delight oh, as did I as yeah. did I but, we'll, we'll, talk we'll get to it we'll get to it but we, we must uh, we must wet the palate as it were mm, with something yeah. completely different yes uh, completely off topic so uh, Todd McFarlane <laughs> is going to make his very own Spawn film he's going to write it he's going to direct it he's going to sing a theme tune he's going to write a theme tune mm-hmm. all, all that and we, we have a Spawn we have a Spawn okay yeah uh, Jamie Foxx is going to play Spawn Okay, so well, that's great. So we're sticking with an African American actor, which is interesting because we had uh, yeah. Michael Jai White, White in the ninety was it six nineteen ninety seven ninety seven and version. Michael Sheen was the bad guy, wasn't he? <clears throat> yeah, not, not and, Michael Sheen, uh, Johnny, Martin Sheen, Martin Sheen, and Johnny Legs was the Johnny player. Legs. Yes, he was. Yeah, yeah. Uh, terrible movie, absolutely awful. Um, yeah, not not even good in like an ironic kind of way like I don't think you could go back and watch it and in, just, in the way that we watch these bad films. And I'm I'm happy Jamie Foxx has been cast over. I've you just, seem to be more trepidatious than I. I've just got to put it out there. This movie will happen. Mm. Uh, like I know, unlike everything Ted, Todd McFarlane ever tries, tries to do, this one will actually happen mm. uh, because Blumhouse are attached. Yeah. You know, so it will happen because money. Um, yeah, Jason Blum is going to produce it, which is great. only problem is, though, Todd McFarlane's involved. Todd McFarlane can't hit a deadline or see anything to completion if his life depends on it. So, <clears throat> whilst I do think this film will materialise in cinemas... You don't think he's going to direct it? I, no, no, I do think he'll direct it. I think he'll half ass it. I don't think he'll actually finish it. I think he'll just shove any old thing out in cinemas. So I think, and I'll put money on it here and now, this movie's going to suck. Okay. Uh, just because I'm a comics fan. And how, how involved was he in the original film? Do you know, offhand, I couldn't tell you. Offhand, because I wasn't really, I wasn't really into Spawn at the time. I get the impression um, that he wasn't. I think he was more involved so in the animated series that yeah. came afterwards, but uh, but that was more <laughs> his vision. I think it was the film, as far as I know, was taken largely out of his hands. Right, but uh, and then he was resentful and he was bitter and he pulled that Joss Whedon card of oh they took it away from me and yeah. mutilated my baby, but then they released a book of the actual original screenplay for Alien Resurrection, Joss, and, now, and we and all now, know. And I was like, I want my own Spawn film with. 
blackjack and hookers. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's what this is. This is how I'm going to make my own sport movie with blackjack and hookers. Yeah. That's exactly what it is. Definitely. <laughs> Should we talk about a movie that uh, doesn't feature blackjack or hookers, then? No, but it's bloody filthy. It is filthy. For, for, for a 12A film. We did 12A. It's 12A. This is, no way. This okay. film is dirt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> right, okay. So the film in question is The Book Club. <laughs> oh, well, is it? Is it the book club or is it just book club? Is it just book club? Yes, because the BBFC title got actually IMDb as well are listing it just as book club. I'm, I'm right? going to go with book oh, club. Oh no, on the poster as well, it's book club. Where have I gotten the from? I think it's one when, when people like talk about pixies and they say the pixies or oh. the Foo Fighters. Well, yeah, but those people are idiots who call them the pixies. Yes, they are. <laughs> right, so book club, which is the latest film from Bill Holderman, who brought us a walk. He was, he was a producer behind uh, Walk in the Woods. Do you remember that? Hmm. As far as I know, this is his first actual directorial effort. Oh, no, I'm correct. Okay, right. So, the film stars mm, Jane Fonda, perfectly preserved in her uh, her unaging Jane Fonda suit. What a babe. Uh, Mary Steenburgen, who... <sighs> I still loves me some Mary Steenburgen. Every time I Double see babe. her... I just like ultimate wife. I just want to embrace her every time I see her. Um, you she also she got, happens to like the roller coaster. Exactly. Yeah. We've got uh, Candice Bergen. From yes. you know, uh, AKA Murphy Brown. Um, <laughs> should, oh, well, and Gandhi, actually, I suppose. <laughs> we should probably probably include that Oscar winning film. And Miss Congeniality. Oh, well, of course. And, and Boston Legal. But, yes. Yeah. Oh, and, and last but certainly by no means least, the collection of ascots and scarves known <laughs> as Diane Keaton. Who's playing a Diane Keaton type? Who's playing a Diane Keaton? She, yes. she, she dresses like Diane Keaton. Like, there's a bit where she gets all fancy dressed up and it's, it's just Diane Keaton wearing a suit. I'm, I'm going to... Do you know every time I see Diane Keaton in the suit with the, mm. uh, with, with the, with the little as- ascot? Yeah. Um, right, question, who's done more for ascots, Diane Keaton or Fred Jones? Uh, oh, Diane Keaton. Yeah. Um, every time I see Diane Keaton in the, in the suit, because she wears, like, really fitted uh, yeah. trouser suits with the ascot, I want to play a game in which we remove her head, right, from the, from the picture. We just clip the picture at the neck, right, and we run a game. Diane Keaton or Bill Nye in Love Actually? Oh, that's genius! Can, can you yeah. see that game? That game would totally. She work. kind of has the same like like hands. She's the move. Yeah, it's just the move. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly that. A rock star <laughs> movement. She does it. Okay, so they are four lifelong friends who have a monthly book club, mm. as a lot, a lot of women do. Mm-hmm. That, uh, but as as it's depicted in fiction, it's always a case of we've read the book. Now we're just going to get together. We're going to down a few bottles of wine. Yeah, and the, the book is an excuse. Yeah, the book is an excuse. So, one month they decide to read Fifty <laughs> Shades of Grey. And, uh, and I know, I know, it's 20, 2018, I know. This sounds like it should have been done as a movie six years ago. <laughs> uh, they read the book Fifty Shades of Grey, and they, it starts to affect their lives insofar as reawakening long-dormant sexual desires, reigniting uh, former flame, you know, things with former flames, and encouraging people, encouraging some of them to pursue relationships they would in a million years Not never do. have done otherwise. In other words... It's just re-sparking the fire, so to speak. Here is a clip of exactly how that's going to work out. This book made me realize that it's been quite a while since we, you know... As in... as in weeks? Mm, like maybe six... Six weeks? Months. Oh my God, I thought you guys were like rabbits. We are. If rabbits took a ton of Benadryl and made a chastity pact. Oh, my God, we have to yeah. put a stop to this. Oh, yeah. come on. I mean, if women our age were meant to have sex, God wouldn't do what he does to our bodies. Oh, well, speak for yourself. Well, that was not God. That was Dr. Nazarian. <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, because Jane Fonda still has the body of it. When you're yeah, she does. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, she does. I uh, love me. I love Jane Fonda. I worship Jane Fonda. I, I grew up a Barbarella fan, so I, I can't really... Uh, I can't yeah. say... I can't hear a disparaging thing against Jane Fonda. And... Uh, Mary Steenberg and, and uh, Ted Danson is who I want me and my wife to be. In, I can I can see in that in thirty absolutely. years. I can yeah. absolutely see that. But uh, and also, <laughs> I mean, it's Diane Keaton. Who doesn't love Diane Keaton? Who doesn't love Diane Keaton? And Candice Bergen. It's a great yeah. cast. It's a great cast. It's a really it's just a great and, cast. And, not, and not just for ladies. There's loads of really oh, great oh fellas okay, in there. okay, right. Just brace yourself for this list of names. Who we got? Yeah. We got Sir Andy of Garcia <laughs> in there. Who is just Charm City? He is, isn't he? Yeah. When you look up Charming in the dictionary. It's just a picture of Andy Garcia smirking. Like I was about to go. I was going to like just leave the cinema. Go straight to the like House Frasier or M&S get some panties from the screen <laughs> um, we also have Craig T. Nelson we have Coach. Don 
We have, we have, we have Don Johnson, hero of mine. And mm. also, amusingly enough, father of the female lead of the Fifty Shades of Grey movie. Yeah, which so, is... Yeah, yeah I thought figure that, that one. Um, and Richard Dreyfus, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Who rocks in there, all Richard Dreyfus-like, and yields a result that only someone just, is staggeringly just absolutely cool. absolutely smashes it. Yes! Yeah. I as, love as, as well as um, uh, Ed Begley Jr. is in there. Wally Sean is Wally in there. Wally Sean is in there a little bit, which is brilliant. Um, I, it, it's a great cast, and you know what? They have a great time. And, right, here's the thing, right... The film, I don't think, is amazing as a film. As an experience of a film to watch, I want to just preface this by saying that uh, last evening, uh, Mr. Allen, Mrs. Allen, and myself uh, popped along uh, to a saga screening of the book club. Um, we were the youngest people there by, two some, decades. by some years. Two decades, easily. easily. Yeah. Um, and, and do you know what? We had a great time. We loved it. The audience was really loving the film, yeah. and the audience was obviously quite a senior audience. Yeah. Uh, they loved the film. It, we it, loved the it film. Was, it was every time someone laughed near us or said, like, oh, this is like, <laughs> that was just really made it oh yeah it yeah. is filthy it is absolutely yeah. filthy um, but it's let's say the film is a 12A it's filthy in a way that's kind of a lot of really really on the nose double entendres and things I would say more than anything isn't yeah. it uh, there's one use of, of the F-bomb and it's in a quote from Fifty Shades of Grey hilariously mm. enough so it really works yeah. it's a film that my mum would love <laughs> I my, think mums around the world. Yeah, would. yeah. My my mum would absolutely just laugh us laugh her socks off at this, mm. um, and I think it's one of those she'd be recommending to all the aunts. Kind of. Thing. It's a film mums would love, but I wouldn't want to see it with no. my own mum no, because no, no, if she no. was to laugh at a joke, but I would understand. I know that she understands that joke. And there's a lot of them in there. There yeah. are just there are lines in there that you you never want to. Yeah. But uh, I will say this. I uh, I say I, I did think it was funny. I did think of all of the sort of comedies for the older crowd, like It's Complicated, Something's Gotta Give, <coughs> uh, Last Vegas, films like that, mm. I think this is the bawdiest, most mainstream, broad sex comedy take you're possibly ever going to get within Definitely, this yeah. narrow subgenre. Yeah. Uh, but it is absolutely worth checking out. And if, if you can... In fact, do you know what? Do you know when the best when's the best time to see this? That Tuesday morning senior screening thing they do at some cinemas. Like if you can go oh to that, God. you know the kind where you get yeah. tea and a biscuit. They will be they'll be spilling coffee and oh like God. bomb biscuits in the aisles. That is Lovely. if I if I had to see this again, I want to go to there. that. Yeah, we should do it with the, where you can clearly just have when the smell it's, of it's, scones it's the, in there. Yeah, it's it's, it's be over fifty five, so I have to get like a disguise and some fake IDs. And, yeah, yeah, I'll do yeah. that. I absolutely would see this that way again. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, but I say it's not a Saturday night date movie. But uh, it, it depends if you're going with a. 65 year old woman if you're a 65 year old man it's, it's, it's a Saturday Night Day movie it's absolutely if you're a 45 year old man you, you might actually now it's probably a stretch you couldn't relate to it we'd still enjoy it yeah but, well we, uh, we enjoyed it and we're uh, well, we're, we're like 20 21 <laughs> aren't you about 30 and I'm about 35 I'm 29 I'll reach now with the latest film news and reviews this is off screen the on-screen radio show. And we're back, Mr. Allen. So, I get Doctor Strange ident for time because it, oh, it took an aging and... Yeah, yeah, so it's all layered. It's all connected. Here. Until you get rid of the time stone. Until you get rid of the time stone. And then... It's been five weeks. <laughs> I ain't spoiling anything. <laughs> if, you heard, if you heard that gag, your mum is so fat, Thanos had to snap, snap his fingers twice. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, God bless you, Twitter. God bless you. Okay. So, a um, piece of news to say before we get to our last review, then. Is there anything uh, of note going on we should know about? Yes, there is news about uh, Paul Wood, mm-hmm. um, who, as we all know, uh, doesn't age. No, he is he is like Dorian Gray. Yeah. But there's, a, there's, a, there's a picture of Scott Lang somewhere. <laughs> um, yeah, he is uh, being eyed to play uh, Sonic. Oh no no he's I sorry no he's he's the human lead in in Sonic I don't oh. I, I don't know who he's, he's been being Sonic. eyed to be the human lead in Sonic <laughs> well, well, well corrected thank you um, apparently he will play a cop oh a cop named Tom Tom the cop Tom the cop who crosses paths with Sonic and decides to aid him on his quest to take down Robotnik right so it is part. It's live action. Live action CGI. It's, it's going to be yeah. like the, the Pikachu detective movie with Ryan Reynolds. And yeah, seems to be almost exactly like the detective yeah. Pikachu movie with Ryan Reynolds. Who's going to get there first? In which Ryan Reynolds Probably is Sonic. a cop. Fast. Who, yeah. Yeah. What What are the odds that you'd make the exact same movie <coughs> out of two different 90s brands? Yeah. Huh. 
Weird that. Sonic. Sonic, Sonic. Uh, this has a targeted release date, though, for the uh, end of 2019. So. And is this the one that uh, Tim Miller is making? Uh, no, I think he's involved in some capacity. I, don't, I think he's a producer or something on it, I believe. He's, he's not directing it. Because he's directing... Uh, he's not. It's a first-time director. Oh, really? But, uh, yeah. Tim Miller's directing uh, Terminator 22. Termin- yeah, exactly. You know, T- Terminator 22, because you clearly asked for this. Yeah, because James Cameron has a vision. <laughs> <laughs> we're all gonna be blue <laughs> he has all the vision of wonder maximum at this stage anyway see, see how bad a joke that was see how bad a joke that was come well on done. come on yeah okay oh, just like uh, <laughs> that's technically a spoiler i just realized anyway um it's been five weeks it's been five weeks it's, been it's five fine weeks. it's fine okay uh so let's talk about last film of the week le mans double the latest le mans double le mans double le, le mans double it's meant it translates to um, the love double or double lover, as it's. Oh, I like I like double lover. Double lover, which yeah. again sounds like a Chardé. You're a double lover. I'm a double lover. We should love each other's doubles. Oh God, these loving lyrics... each other's. Why are we not forming some sort of synthwave throwback? Because I don't want that? Long Island to sue me. That's why. <laughs> right. Um, you see, I didn't realize that. Uh, oh, so yeah. This yeah. is the latest from Francois Ozon, and uh, this is a. I just realized who this guy is. This is the guy who did rubber and. It's the same guy, isn't it? No, Francois no? was on. I don't think Francois was on. Did rubber? Did he? Is that not the flight Eric guy? No, I don't. I don't realise it was it rubber. He didn't do rubber. Please tell me he didn't do rubber. I'm going to feel ridiculous. No, he did not do rubber. Okay, oh, then, no. then I, I feel like <laughs> it's fine. He did France a couple of years ago. Uh, remember the black and white one? I really loved it. Oh right, right. Not like he just went to France. And not like he went just, to Fra- just, just no, a France mad time. with a T and a Z. Um, just got to do France. He also directed uh, Potiche. Remember Potiche? Didn't get a UK release for about two years afterwards. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. It is. Uh, it's a. It's a ninety style erotic thriller about a dysfunctional young woman who has been a sort of failed model. She's gone into a Bohemian, uh, you know, the Bohemian work environment. Uh, she's having issues. She goes to a psychiatrist. She makes progress. Falls for the psychiatrist, who in turn falls for her, mm. and they move in together and begin their lives with one another. However, this being a ninety style erotic thriller, that can't simply be left to happen unimpeded. And soon enough, she discovers there may be something more to his past than he has perhaps let on. Um, what that something is, you will discover very quickly in the film. I think it takes place about half an hour in. But um, great cast. Uh, my, one of my favourite names ever for a French actor. Jeremy Renier. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Is that just Jeremy Renner with like a mustache? It's, it's Jeremy Renner with a mustache. <laughs> Jeremy <laughs> Renier. I'm sure it's Renier. Homer. I'm Who sure. is this Homer? My name is Guy Incognito. <laughs> I think it might be Ren- uh, Renier or Ren- I'm sure it's Renier. Yeah. Um, Marine Vach, uh, who's Chloe the lead. Say uh, Jeremy Renier is uh, is uh, the, the the psychiatrist, and then you've got Jackie Bissett in there. No way, Jacqueline Bissett. I know. And you know what? I still I still you know hold my mouth ajar when I see her even though she's about 90 years old now um, but uh, just great performances across the board I really love the tone it's a bit sillier than we're used to of Francois Ozon and I know that's caused a lot of problems for a lot of his hardcore fans that he's done this sort of popcorn cookie cutter kind of thing it's like when Brian De Palma did that remake of uh, you know Crime de Moor mm. which uh, was ill-advised but the original was so much sleazy fun and also, at least he got Rachel McAdams to star in the remake. So, swings and roundabouts. Yeah. Went this, I, I had fun with it. it. It took me to places. Didn't think it was going to go. It tied in at a nice, tidy uh, 110, 110 minutes thereabouts. That's good. Uh, love the performances. Love the uh, the scintillating, everything is made of silk and satin <laughs> level of cinematography on there. It's a very uh, soft focus film. Mm. Not quite as soft focus as the book club. Naturally, but uh, yeah, I love some soft that did on. that was butter on a lens. That yeah, was. Yeah. <laughs> butter on a lens cinematography. So this is, talking like like cataracts. Yeah, this is perfume ad <laughs> cinematography. Yeah, yeah, this is all perfume ad cinematography, but everyone everyone just gives their sexiest performance, whether it makes sense mm. or not. Are you going? To, are you going to the bank today? Well, yes, I am, Mister Bank Teller. Allow me to serve you sexily. That is this film. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's very much that. Um, I liked it. It was an unashamed, you know, hard 18, uh, some some great sort of psycho thriller elements in there, some great noir elements in there. I had a lot of fun with it. Thought the performances were were pretty great as well. Uh, always happy to see Jackie Bissett in a movie. Win for me. Good one, Frankie. So uh, 
I don't know if I'm going to call it film of the week, though. I think, in a very strange way... Book club. I want to give it to the book club. Do it. Because the fun was had. So, fun was had with the book club. So, uh, that is our film of the week. So, uh, next week, we're not doing a show. Because no. there's, like, Jurassic World and, and two other films. Funny story. <laughs> yeah, funny story. You know the first ever off-screen we did was for Jurassic World? Was it? It was. Oh. In a week when it was released on its own and with no other films. What a time for this to be my last ever off screen. <laughs> <laughs> We've done one, th- we done one thir- This is 139, I think. Really? This is number 139, I believe. Oh, my God. I know. So that's a little thing about where your life has gone, huh? Mm. But uh, okay, so hours. when we come back, though, when we uh, when we get back, because we're gonna take one week off, because why not? We're people too, damn it. Yeah, yeah. So we're gonna have a week off. When we come back, we can talk about Hereditary. Finally, that's out that week. Uh, Studio Fifty Four, which is a documentary about guess what? Studio Fifty Four, the making of the Mike Myers movie Fifty Four. Really? No, I'm kidding. It's actually a documentary about <laughs> Studio Fifty Four. Man, I would watch that. <laughs> you would have though, wouldn't yeah. you? Yeah. <laughs> uh, we've got a re. Issue of the piano that's coming out as well, which means Harvey Keitel is in two movies that week. Um, what a bad lieutenant! Yeah, we've got the Happy Prince, no relation to the Christmas Prince, sadly. No, uh, we've got uh, the Kiambra, we've got Super Troopers 2. Oh my god, is that really coming out here? I know it's me, i oh. finally here. And we've got last but by no means least, Ocean's 8. Yeah. What? Two weeks time, Ocean's 8. Yep. That has come around fast. And of course, because we won't have done a review for it, we can probably talk about Jurassic World in some sort of expanded top five. Capacity, yeah. Capacity. Because I think it'll, it'll be number two. Number yeah, two oh, it'll be, yeah, yeah, I think I think quite possible. I don't know. I think it'll pip solo. Do you? I, Do think, really? pip, I think Jurassic World could pip solo. I think people are more interested globally in... Oh, uh, this is stop being a joke and you're actually being serious. Of course it's got to pip solo. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh my God, yeah. Sorry, I've had people telling me, oh, wait, no, solo's doing fine. Please, please, please stop being silly. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. <laughs> and these people were... <laughs> The head of the business. Business. Is it, is it now. Bob, Bob Iger? <laughs> it was, yes. Yeah. Right, so uh, we've got all those to come and more in two weeks' time off screen. <laughs> in the meanwhile, this has been Kelly Storbridge for On Screen. I've been Van Connor. I've been really ill, so I'm really sorry if you've heard me coughing or sneezing or anything, but I'm, I'm still Case Allen and I'll be here in a bit. And we'll be back. Just show me the way to get out of here and I'll be on my way. You've been listening to Off Screen. For more news and reviews, visit onscreenfilm.com. Podcast extras then, Mr. Allen. So, where should we begin this week? I mean, there's still news, there's still some news to cover. We've not got any reviews to do, so we might as well no. just uh, news, cover, news, what we news. Can, cover what we can of the of the film news and, uh, and uh, let's see what we can get. <laughs> Apparently, uh, Alex Garland has no intention of doing a sequel to uh, Annihilation. Because nobody understood it. You said what you did, you didn't. You're a liar. <laughs> you know what? Not entirely wrong there either. Yeah. I, yeah. I like it. But yeah. yeah. <laughs> Apparently, Zack Snyder is finally set to fulfill his destiny. He will mm. be uh, directing an adaptation of Ayn Rand's The Fountainhead. I mean, that's perfect when uh, material meets filmmaker, isn't it? <laughs> it really is, isn't it? <laughs> Something overblown. <laughs> Yeah. Um, and also speaking of that Snyder you know how the whole thing with Snyder was always the Snyder cut of Justice League mm. how this thing clearly doesn't exist but people want to apparently the same thing is now happening with the Lord and Miller solo well, trailer well of course it is yeah apparently there yeah. is a trailer for Solo that Lord and Miller put together from their footage and people are now can we see it can we Can we have it now and no no it's never <clears> going to happen because you'll you'll want that other film that doesn't exist and... well, exactly yeah uh, we oh, also have oh, the news this week that uh, Sesame Street are going to sue Happy Time Murders yeah I can't wait for this film doesn't it come from Henson though well, this thing Half-time. is time it comes from I they have forget their actual name alright the story is, it's, it's Jim Henson's son who's directed this. That's what makes it hilarious. Yeah, that's why I thought that it was kind of... You thought it was sanctioned, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, I thought that it obviously wasn't canon to like Muppets or anything, but I thought that they were still going to put their name on it. <laughs> Pretty much. Um, this is the thing. So it, it's, uh, it's the Jim Henson company, right? Hmm. So this is the idea. It's the Jim Henson company who um, are going to war now with uh, uh, Sesame Street. This is this is the whole thing because <coughs> there was always that there was, there was a divide to begin with. Then the the brand started to merge. Now they're dividing again, and this is the whole thing because the the, the trailer for Happy Time Murders, which is a movie I've wanted to see for years, oh yeah, looks awesome. It's, it's Roger Rabbit with Muppets mm. and. 
and, and an R rating, and, 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 and yeah, and a and a and a, a, a squirty cream. What do you call it? A silly string yeah. gag that I think is going to own cinema for the next year. <laughs> <laughs> you put that in the trailer. Like, of course you put that in the trailer. Oh, you absolutely put that in the trailer. Yeah. You, you totally do. Um, uh, Harvey Weinstein has finally uh, finally reached what would appear to be uh, the end of his road this week as oh, well. Are we, are we that, that portion of the show already? But, uh, yeah, yeah. we're just, just going to say it. he's been charged with, you know, rape and assault, so. Yeah, and uh, doing stuff to plants that will get you thrown out of a and q Well, apparently none of that was a crime. That's the weird thing. What? Yeah. Yeah, that's the, a, the plant stuff. It's a, yeah, it's a crime against plants. <laughs> you are not poison ivy, no matter how much you would wish it, Uma. Anyway. <laughs> my eyes aren't escaping from both sides of my head, so I'm not doing <laughs> um, Your eyes are not trying to flee in separate directions. Yeah, let's, let's stick with that, though. Uh, Morgan Freeman. Yes. Well, that's ruined cinema, hasn't it? That's that's basically... I don't. That was the news where I just thought, I don't want to do this job anymore. Yeah, I don't want to talk about this. But uh, it's also the fact that uh, apparently Alan, uh, Alan Arkin is also mm. a hero. Like that has that has come out. So what Morgan, is this? Morgan I've not, Freeman. I've not heard about this. Okay, so Morgan Freeman. Oh, something about uh, going in style because they yeah. work together on that. Exactly that. In fact, <laughs> right. apparently Alan Alda told him off. Al- Al- him, Alan Alan Arkin. Uh, Alan Arkin. Sorry, yeah. not Alan Alda. Alan Arkin apparently told him off. Got him in line. Told him to get his uh, his, his, his his s together. Yes. Yes. Arkin. Like, Thank you, Arkin. You legend. Oh. Thank you for not being a bad person. Yeah. Oh, I've never loved Alan Arkin more or Alan Alda. Uh, yeah, and I, I I love them both. I love both Alan's. I'm, I'm a big I'm a big Alan fan. Yeah, big proponent of the Alan's. But uh, yeah, James Mangold <laughs> apparently is going to direct that Boba Fett movie, as we were saying. Yes, yes, uh, he earlier. is. Uh, yeah. Um, okay. Not sure why. I'm excited more that it's a James Mangold film. To be honest, after Logan. <laughs> yeah. 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 I well, mean, it's a Boba Fett film. We already had a Boba Fett film. It was called Episode Two, and it sucked. So. Yeah, because the thing is, we don't want to know more about him. Like I, but, his, his, his appeal is the mystery. I mean, I know that he's a he's a tiny clone, <laughs> pretty much. Although yeah. I will, I will go with one exception. I would allow, right, if Disney, because you know they're doing this uh, prequel TV series, it's going to be set like fifteen years after Return <laughs> of the Jedi, Johnny Favreau, one? Johnny Favreau one. Yeah, uh, if they wanted to do a a a prequel time Boba Fett series in which he never said a word. And the only talking characters were characters who existed around him. And like, like, set, like a Western. Yeah. yeah. And this was set decades before. You know what? I'll take it. Mm. That's pretty much the only circumstance I want to see a Boba Fett story. Ever. And if it's a Disney movie, you know it's not going to happen. It's yeah. going to be helmet off every five minutes, talking away, wisecracking, one-liners. Unless well, we get a Western like Logan version and then he'll, of Boba Fett. He'll win Slave 1 at the end because they'll lost it for some reason. Mm. And yeah. Yeah. So there's, there's that. So uh, Transformers 6 has been cancelled. It's been quietly removed. It has, hasn't it? <laughs> um, yeah. Possibly because there's a god. Well, it's right, and oh. I, I genuinely think that people are excited about Bumblebee. I think and, so. And I'm not saying I am excited, but I'm going to say that it's probably going to be better than every other Transformers movie. <laughs> I think it's got Cena in it. It's already it's got, got Lego. It's got Cena. I think, I think Pamela Adlin's in it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think she is. I think um, possible. Uh, Hayley Steinfeld is bleed. Um, it's directed by the guy that owns Leica. Which exactly. Like, which like is he, awesome. he must have signed on for a reason, and not just to like, like just bankroll more Leica films. True. True. Yeah. I He's hope- got enough money. His dad like owns shoes, doesn't he, or something like. <laughs> His dad owns like Reebok or someone. Yeah. yeah. He's got, got that Reebok money. Did you know John Malkovich is going to play Hercule Poirot? What for a three time a three part. Um, murder mystery series on BBC America. Oh, yes. Yeah, exactly. That, yes. That's just insane. Could you imagine that? Didn't, what was his moustache going to look like? Even yeah. bigger. It's gonna, that's it now, isn't it? It's, it's who can grow the biggest ash. Yeah. <laughs> yeah but, and then when we see the next uh, Kenneth Branagh one, he's got an even bigger moustache. It's just... i got to tell you, I finally got around to seeing uh, Murder on the Orient Express. Branagh's Murder on the Orient Express. Oh, on, you did uh, see it at cinema, didn't you? I didn't see it. I saw it at cinema. Uh, I finally got around to watching it on home release, and... I gotta say, not blown away. No. I don't think anyone was. No. I thought it was entertaining. I came out of it. Well, I never spoke. What were you to expecting it? if you wanted to be blown away from it? I just. <laughs> I figured you must have something in the tank, otherwise you wouldn't be doing this. If, if you wanted to be blown away and you're going to go see a film that you know what's going to happen, well, yeah, then yeah. Well, I knew what was going to happen. Captain want... America: Winter Soldier, and did you? you? Know. What Evan? Pretty much, yeah. Did you know that Gary Sinise was going to be uh, playing a voice part? I did not know that. Yeah. 
Oh, not, not Winter Soldier, sorry. Uh, not Winter Soldier. Uh, 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 First Avenger, I'm thinking of. Not Winter Soldier, sorry. Oh, well, you're going to get like yeah, a... Yeah, you know, Frozen in Ice and... Yeah, because you had me throw from it. Like, when was Gary Sinise in World when War? When we go to the museum thing in... Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. No, I was thinking, like, when, was he in, when was he in World War Two in those scenes? Yeah. <laughs> sorry, no, that was my father. Everyone went. It's fine, um, because I said the wrong movie and didn't realise that. It's because thought. I watched Forrest Gump the other day and I just want to talk about Gary Sinise. I always want to talk about Gary Sinise. Yeah. Doesn't he have a band called the Lieutenant Dan Band? Yeah, he does. Which is brilliant. I want to see him and I want to see Keanu Reeves' band at the same time. I want to see like a double bill. Is Dogstar still a thing? Yeah, I think so. Are, are they still Dogstar? I hope so. That was so mid-90s, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, they had like his, his Matrix bass. Remember like 95 when you used to always see pictures of a long-haired Keanu Reeves on stage at Glastonbury? Yeah. yeah. But uh, uh, what else did I have for you before we wrap down? Oh, uh, that Michael Bay movie with Ryan Reynolds. Yeah. Remember that one? That's going to be on... Uh, on What's it called now? It's the one about the billionaires who become bounty hunters. It's the Netflix one, isn't it? It is. They're billionaires who fake their deaths to become mercenaries. Right. Like really well-resourced it's mercenaries. Called the, it's called the Rich A-Team. It's called Six Underground. Because that's also the name of one of my favourite songs. Right. Uh, apparently it's <laughs> going to cost $150 million for Netflix. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't expecting that one, oh, were you? Oh, my <laughs> God, that's a lot of money. I uh, know, that uh, is just should, should, we, should we do a little bit of uh, TV news? Yeah, do to close out with TV news this week. Then. Yeah. Oh, oh, one last one last thing on film, because it's real quick. Liam Neeson's in talks of Men in Black 4. Yeah, he is. Yeah, do, he do is. Do you think he's going to be the head of uh, the, the, be... like, the UK division? I and... hope so. Yeah. yeah. I'm looking forward to that. I am as well. I got I got faith. So let's uh, let's move on to TV then to close us out this week. What we got? Right. You know that uh, Walking Dead is crazy popular. Apparently, still. Yes, it shows no sign of dying. It might now, because Andrew Lincoln is leaving. <laughs> I don't think that'll stop them. Apparently, Norman Reedus is going to be, like, the de facto lead now. Really? Yeah. Okay, well, I'm happy about that, because Norman Reedus should always have been the de facto lead yeah. of The Walking Dead. And uh, Rick is going to be in, like, six episodes of the next season, and then he's he's probably going to die. Or yeah, they're, and they're killing him. Yeah. yeah. And then, what's her face? She's, she's got a new show, so she'll probably leave. Oh, Lauren Cohen. Yeah. And yeah, also, yeah. she was demanding more money. Because I think she's been on the same contract since she has since one of the, the show like well, originally that's aired. Insane, like entirely different character now. Yeah, like eight seasons later, and she's like she's a main character. And good, yeah. Lord. And and then other TV news, like mm. both of these happened. I think this morning well, I saw them this morning when I woke up. Yeah, um, Roseanne has been cancelled. Yes, yes, Roseanne got cancelled because Roseanne herself uh, has Paul, caused Paul controversy. Roseanne, yeah. So what, she, what is it she's done? She's put out a tweet. She put out a couple of tweets. So I think the one that's um, got the most attention, she said something about um, one of uh, Barack Obama's former aides. Well, like one of one of his, his top aides. I think I caught this, yeah. Something to do with her, her Muslim background and then liking her to being like a character from Planet of the Apes. And, and of course, being a black woman, there's an obvious connotation that I don't yeah. think you can quite escape there. No, and ABC straight away were like, we are done. But did I think did I read that the order came from like on high in Disney? Yeah, they're like no, no, and I'm sorry, we're Disney. Yeah. Uh, brilliant, because they are at the end of the day, and they can't, they can't have that. And it just, it just feels like not so much a big smack, smack face like the fans that have been watching the new incarnation. Because I, I do feel like there's definitely a place for this new show because it's been really good. Because there's been some great people writing. It. I'm surprised you've been, you've been watching. I didn't realize you had. No, definitely. Well, like my my wife's always been a massive fan of Roseanne. Oh, okay. and. The new season, genuinely, because of the people that have been writing it, mm. is really great. It's really smart. It's really well written. It's great just to have a weekly John Goodman. I was just going to say, isn't it? Yeah. You just want John Goodman on telly. One and the only character that has these um, like right wing views are Roseanne, and it works because at the start of each episode, when she's saying all these stupid things, she's being played as being the idiot. Oh, okay. Being, well, yeah, that makes more sense. Who, who like learns the error of her ways by the end of the episode? Like, literally, the last episode that I watched um, a couple of days ago was about um, she had some new uh, Muslim neighbours that come and oh, live yeah. next to, next door, and she obviously by the end of it she realises oh they're just people as well they've got kids and <laughs> yeah funny that <laughs> yeah and she thinks they're from they're from like like Afghanistan and they're not they're from Cleveland actually, no I think from Iran uh. and. <laughs> That, yeah, that's it's just, always my favourite gag those when they say where you're from Cleveland <laughs> yeah um, Tom it, used to do it in Parks and Rec didn't he so. yes he did yeah it just it, it really I think was was really yeah. just the fact that like they had such a good couple of episodes where they had that as the sole focus of, of the show <laughs> and now this has happened it's just oh man do you think it's do you think she's just self-destructive I think we just have a show called Dan now 
<laughs> You'd watch it, though, wouldn't you? Yeah. Oh, my God. Idea. Dan, starring John Goodman. John Goodman moves into a motel <laughs> on his own, newly divorced, ready to yeah. start his life. Because his wife killed him off in a previous season. <laughs> <laughs> Weird. Um, I did read one tweet that said, uh, season seven, episode one of Last Man Standing. Tim Allen opens his door. Welcome to our neighborhood, new neighbor. Welcome, Roseanne. Yeah. Yeah. That would uh, that would actually be kind of the ideal crossover there, wouldn't it? It would, yeah. And I, I don't think you should see the show as just being like mm. a radical right wing show because it's really not been the point of this season. So it is worth me watching them. Not Absolutely. Myself. Okay, I'll give it a little yeah, look. Up until you know today. <laughs> <laughs> had they finished the season? Yeah, it's, it's finished airing. That was it. Was it, 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 it? It's it's had a it's had a finale for the season. Yeah, and, and from what I can uh, what I can ascertain, they were like even pre production on season two, or they were like, mm. ready to start writing it. Or hadn't they? Because it was so. Popular. They said it's so popular they've greenlit multiple seasons, haven't they? Yeah. But, wow. Guess the game really was Roseanne's to lose, huh? Yeah. <laughs> it's just I feel like there's going to be massive ramifications from this, and and it's it's rubbish, and not just because it's a show that I like, just because of I, I feel like people are going to feel cheated by it. I've, oh, I've always found it strange that ABC brought Roseanne back anyway, given that uh, Twitter, especially on Twitter, her political opinions had never exactly been subtle. No, but she seemed to, like, not make amends for it because mm. free speech and all that, but she did seem to dial a lot of it back to the point of it being ABC friendly. Yeah. Yeah. And the rest of the cast is so, like, so left leaning. <laughs> They are, aren't they? Yeah. They're weirdly left. Like. Yeah, and that's that's played in like the first couple of episodes as well. <laughs> apart from Dan, because you never really know where Dan's going. Apart mm. from like the odd the odd thing. Um, but yeah, <laughs> I, feel like, I feel like if you ask John Goodman, he'll still just say, "I've been selling that couch for twenty seven years." I'm like Nelson Mandela. Yeah. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, well, I mean, I'll give it a look on your recommendation. I am intrigued. Uh, I kind of like I, I'm surprised that more people haven't recommended it to you. Uh, who do I hang out with? I hang out with you, really, most of the time. Yeah, that's true. And, you know, the only other people I talk to regularly are film critics. We should watch it just for Laurie Metcalf, sorry, for Laurie Metcalf and, uh, and for John Goodman. That's true. Is is Elliot from Scrubs still in it? Yeah, they, they bring it back in like a clever way, because she was the replacement Becky. Yeah. And she comes back in this as a different character. So the original, oh. the, yeah, the, the original Becky is, is playing Becky again. Okay. And, uh, and Sarah Chalk. Sarah Chalk. Yeah. She comes in and she's a woman who uh, can't have a baby. So she hires new Becky as like a surrogate. Oh, and she's, okay. Yeah. So she, she's in two or three episodes or something. That's quite clever, actually. It's, yeah. it's a good way to like include everyone. Yeah, fair enough. Actually, well, you've sold me. Uh, I'm intrigued. So, well, I've, I've sold you, and she yeah. is talking fair, to fairly me well, Roseanne. Yeah. It's like when I met that woman on the tube that time. who kept asking about uh, Ash versus Evil Dead. Let me tell you the story. <laughs> yes, thanks, so. sir. Yeah, and she's really excited to discover that there was more Evil Dead in the world. Mm. But then I had to break this news to her. It's been cancelled. As I was telling her, yeah, it, it kind of been cancelled in the last couple of days, dear. I'm so sorry. Yeah. Still, <laughs> so you got three seasons. Yeah, you got three seasons to enjoy. You enjoy that. Uh, so, speaking of you know seasons and video on demand and streaming, um, here is this week our very special educational moment. Off cage. Well, we have different formats now with uh, streaming, with uh, VOD. Um, at first, I took umbrage with it because I, I love the cinema experience. Um, you know, I know Nolan wants to keep pictures 70 millimeter because he thinks it's saving the cinema experience because you can't watch it in your living room, and I agree with him. But I, I feel that um, even though I took umbrage with the video on demand format at first, I began to realize that it has an audience and it has a way of keeping screenplays that may take chances alive in that model, whereas the studios may not make them. So I, I do think it enables um, unique material to remain being seen. So I've come around now and I think it's a good it's a good uh, model to keep uh, independently spirited films uh, viewable. There's such a diversity now, or a polarity, if you will, between what will get financed, mm. which is the blockbuster, the sequel being, and by the way, Dunkirk is the only original movie in that format. The rest of them are either sequels or blah, blah, blah. Um, and because of that, you know, the studios don't really want to roll the dice on terribly original material, they don't want to take the risk, and I understand that. I mean, I get it. They, there's a lot of money on the line. I used to be in those movies that were... But I, I am enjoying 
the ability to explore my roots, which was independently spirited. I came out of Vampire's Kiss and Raising Arizona. It was independent cinema that really was my, my passion. And so I think that video on demand is allowing that to carry on.